Okay, um, today I'm going to be covering new features in Transmar ETL. So for those who may not know, um, Thomson Reuters created an alternative um, ETL tool. And we created this early on in the development of Transmar in, in, uh, before version 1.0. And it's available on GitHub at this URL. It was written in Groovy. It doesn't use Kettle, but it uses a number of the same stored procedures. And um, in our ETL tool, the stored procedures may be different, and there's cases where sometimes we have additional stored procedures and, and vice versa compared to <laughs> the traditional Kettle tool. Um, this tool supports Transmart versions 1.0, 1.1, and 1.2. And it supports both Oracle and Postgres. And it's been um, thoroughly tested on both. Recently, we created a new schema for this ETL tool. It's called the TM Data Loader, Loader Schema. And um, for anyone that's familiar with um, Transmar ETL, traditionally there's been um, three schemas, TMCZ, TMLZ, and TMWZ, and uh, Control Zone, load zone, work zone. And um, we created a, a new schema because we wanted to give users the option of being able to have multiple ETL tools if they would like on, on their same database. So this way you can have this tool, you can have a, perhaps the pedal tool or other tools and they will not clobber each other. Um, for Postgres, we have a script where you can create the single um, TM data loader schema. Um, an Oracle script is coming out soon. Um, for Oracle, we are still using, by default, the traditional three ETL schemas. However, um, for Oracle, you can configure these three schemas to be whatever you like. So. Um, there is a config.groovy property file. And within this property file, you can set properties such as load schema, control schema, and these could be schemas other than the three traditional schemas. We added the support for new data types, and um, this is working. Um, we have SNP, uh, VCF, miRNA, qPCR, miRNA set proteomics, metabolomics, RNSEC, RBM, and coming soon will be um, ACGH array and serial high dimensional data. Oh, and, and for all of these types, um, we have test data um, available in a subdirectory called fixtures for all these types that um, one could use. And this is an example of um, what you would see once you loaded our test data with the ETL tool. This is uh, metabolomics. And this is a phosphoric, phosphoric acid chosen as the high dimensional data pathway. And this is uh, within Transmart 1.2. Uh, this is um, an example using our ETL tool, again, with our test data. And this is um, miRNA-seq in Transmart 1.2. Um, we also added some new features. You can, within the tool, delete a study by ID. You can delete a study by path. So this would be the path within Dataset Explorer, within um, Transmart. You can move a study. So you can move a study from one path to another. And we also added a locking mechanism, um, a locking feature, which prevents if you're running the ETL tool, it will prevent you from starting another instance because ETL tends to not do too well when that occurs. And um, the ETL tool is a command-based tool, so you run it just with the Java command like this. Um, if you were to do dash H, you would get a number of the options that are available. Um, I didn't list all the options here because there's too many, but um, this is showing some of our new options. So delete study by ID, delete study by path, um, move study um, are just a few of the options. We also did a lot of work in um, performance improvements. So we did performance improvements within um, clinical trial ETL, gene expression ETL, and SNP ETL. 
And just a few examples of some of the things we did. Um, we added um, parallel execution and append optimization to a number of the queries, many queries. Um, certain queries we split into subqueries for better performance. Um, we analyzed a number of queries and reordered joins to be better optimized with the query processor. Um, we dropped and rebuilt indexes, so we would, for certain um, ETL, we would drop the index, insert update the data, rebuild the index. This, this helped boost performance in certain cases. Uh, we did additional truncating and analyzing of tables um, using Oracle Cataloger, and uh, we also did this in Postgres. And then um, additional, we, we created additional procedures to pre-compute data. And the results were that studies that used to take a number of days to load now take hours, and studies that used to take hours now take minutes. Um, and when I say minutes, I'm talking maybe like 10 to 30 minutes, not a few minutes. But um, it, it, all these changes really helped a lot. And if anyone has questions, um, this is my email address, or you can also contact Sir Michael Shah. And thank you. Thank you, Brian. Questions, comments? Thank you. Sure. Study. You can move it, but at, as of right now, no, I don't think you can rename it, but you can put you can move it. it. Yeah, you can delete and then reload, or um, you could move it. You can definitely rename the folder. Um, the whole file would probably switch out towards the um, It would be whatever is in the database. <laughs> Uh, for you, uh, to the and you uh, and 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 uh, has a, a, a number of tables, there's hundreds <laughs> of tables, and um, it, it doesn't surprise you that SQL is, <laughs> is the most common uh, out of the lines of code. But um, yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of data types, and, and um, we, we could be moving some of the logic to that level. Um, there's also um, other technologies that, that we could be looking at as more towards the technology. So there's, it's such an exciting time to, to be part of Transmart and have the community bringing in all these ideas. And then, yeah, I think that's really We have time for a couple more questions. Yeah, one question is, is it going to be Right now it's not a title book because a number of the stored procedures are the same. I, I believe that we can do a um, very nice uh, merging effort and, and work together on, on bringing in some of these stored procedures and vice versa. All right. All right. I think it's interested. Um, I know someone seems to uh, work on a particular topic of the stored procedures anymore. 
just because uh, some of these people are getting very concerned. So uh, at least we have to make them more easy to work on the whole first one because they tend to do a business schedule all the time. So it's really hard to get a lot of work. And also, um, we didn't keep building that well because it's a lot of time. That's pretty much easier. I think uh, most of the women are going to do that. I'm going to do that. We are going to do that. That's a good term of that. So that might be very interesting to me. Uh, so I took that for a while. Um, what technology do you use for this framework? So right now it's, it's it, there's a um, it's Groovy based. So there's a Groovy tool that kind of calls and controls the stored procedures, and then um, just like you mentioned, there's a number of stored procedures in Oracle, and there's a number of stored procedures. And yeah, it, keeping um, working on, on those two platforms can sometimes be challenging to start with. Thank you. So yesterday we saw a pretty interesting slide from the Rancho folks who showed us an uh, application known as a component of the ETL process. Would this make sense to think about a knowing of what we've done with the uh, nine procedures so that we could build a little bit easier operating console for the less initiated people in the next month? Uh, yes, so um, one of the things that we're, we're very seriously looking at is um, a, a more user-friendly GUI type of uh, tool, um, whether that's, say, uh, in a web browser or perhaps a tool like that. Um, so that's something that we were very seriously considering because right now it's command based and um, we want to open up this transport platform that is committed to people that maybe don't work with what it is or don't work with the type of functionality. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, so the other thing that yeah, uh, uh, in the beginning of uh, basically doing this more or less the same thing as, as you did, but uh, in, a, in, a, in a movie project we seem to bring that uh, it's, it's in a very initial phase. Uh, but I, I, I look quickly at, uh, at, uh, at your code. Um, actually, it doesn't seem that <laughs> especially with good, but, but uh, what I'm wondering is, if you're not replacing the start procedure, what did you gain just by replacing the cache? Um, I, the idea was to um, be able to debug things a, a little bit easier. So, um, from what I understand, we had some difficulty um, debugging Pedal, and so it was just kind of reducing some of that complexity. Um, we, we upload a lot of studies where we have you know, thousands of subjects or thousands of SNP files, and, and so being able to do this quickly um, and, and be able to debug all the issues that may come along with curation of data and things like that, it, it became difficult, from my understanding. So you don't have any problems with the I mean, yes, there are sometimes, but um, it, just kind of taking out the, the title layer of the layer helps. Thank you, Gustavo. 